Artist interview number six, we are here with, here with what's your name? Danielle Sepulveris. <laughs> oh wait, Sepulveris. Sepulveris. I've always been pronouncing it wrong. What have you been pronouncing it? Sepulveris. Oh, that's how everybody pronounces it. Okay, so okay. what's the story behind your name? My, my last name is actually Spanish, and okay. um, yeah, and everyone on my dad's side was from Spain, and then they left Spain, and apparently they were on some large boat that was in a big storm, and they all thought they were going to die, so they said wherever they landed was where they would make their home, and they landed in Italy. Uh -huh. I don't know, nobody seems to know where they were really headed, or what was going on, or maybe they were pirates, you know, who knows. <laughs> <laughs> but um, yeah, so they, they made it to Italy, and, and so my family's Italian, but the, where they came from is Spain, which is why I guess Sepulveris is, is not your traditional Italian last name. Oh, I see. <laughs> And uh, you talk about it, you have a book out, and mm -hmm. uh, that's what caught my interest in your your art. You see yourself as an artist? Yes. Yes. It's interesting how you reacted to it. You looked up, and then you said yes. Do you remember well, what happened in that one moment when you just said yes? I guess because artist, I think of, um, well, the first thing I think of is someone who's really good at drawing or painting or something. I don't know why. Because I, I know artist is so, you know. It's kind of well, a general term, right? Yes. Yeah. And then it can mean so many things. So, um, so yes, I am. I am an artist. I just, I can't draw. <laughs> <laughs> so what's your art then? Um, besides eating these. <laughs> um, That's pretty artistic there. Right? Wow. Isn't that pretty? Let's say put it in your mouth then. Oh, Let's say, why? <laughs> oh. <laughs> no, it's okay. Um, um, writing. Writing. Yeah, writing, creating, uh, creating a story, mm -hmm. you know, um, but more than that, creating a story that people feel, you know, when, um, when I write a story, if I'm getting emotional when I'm writing it, um, I automatically know that somebody else is going to get emotional <sighs> reading it. It's a very weird, wow. like... <laughs> That's exciting because when I, I, I when I was reading your book, mm -hmm. and, and um, as I was coming on the subway here, I was reminded of how I guess it's, it strikes me as emotional, and you you strike me as uh, gifted in your ability to communicate emotion. Thank you. Um, I mean that's just how I respond to it. Mm -hmm. So it's really rewarding to hear you talk about about that. So you, um, what are the, some of the subjects that you write about, hmm. or you enjoy writing about? Um, I like to. I, I really. I'm much better about writing about myself and, and things that happen to me on a daily basis versus fiction. I mean, I have written short stories and fiction to that, but I just feel more comfortable writing in sort of a memoir style. Uh -huh. and, um, you know, because I think there's so much ridiculousness in, in everyday life uh -huh. and just in, in the normal. Um, I mean, it's kind of why I think that Seinfeld was such a brilliant show. It's a show about nothing. It's a show about just random nonsense that happens every day, you know? Yeah. Um, and so, I think sometimes that's that's better than what you could possibly make up. Well, all right, so you've written this book. It's called? Losing It, the Semi-Scandalous Story of an Ex-Version. Okay, so is it about nothing? It is not about nothing. <laughs> <laughs> I see what you did there. Yeah. Um, no, it's uh, it's about my life from 23 to 26. I uh, fell in love for the first time, which was very exciting and scary and fun and, and all those sort of emotions. Um, and he hurt me badly, and uh, he also <laughs> gave me HPV. And then uh, for three years, I was worried about getting cervical cancer. So, you know, not exactly your ideal fairy tale romance. Yeah. Um, and I ju it just was a really bad point in time for me, and, and I was really depressed. And what what point? Uh, when you when it was over, like, or you know, uh, even while it was going on, because if you look back on stuff and, and why you broke up with someone um, and, and why a relationship didn't work in, initially, you keep going back to them. I think because. You sort of, you, you like to outweigh the bad with the good, so you would be like, oh, but we had this amazing night where, you know, we had this dinner out somewhere and he bought me this necklace and he, uh, you know, said these things and told me he loved me and that, you know, he wanted to buy a house that we could live in together and, mm -hmm. and you know, we were going to have four kids and all that crap. And... You talked about that. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Um, but, you know, that doesn't, that doesn't outweigh, you know, not being there. That doesn't outweigh actions. You know, things mm -hmm. people say. If you're not, if you're not demonstrating what you say, then you, you know you have to look at that over. Right. You know, somebody constantly being like, "I'm sorry, I love you." Great. 
Okay. Now what? Uh, <laughs> what else? What else you got? So that you found that you wanted to. You've been thinking about that a lot. The the the, the words didn't add up to anything. I that? think I think that since him, I think that's what I look at with people, with anybody that I go out with, or you know, whether it's platonic or romantic. Mm -hmm. If if somebody is saying one thing and doing another. You know, I can't, and I don't have time for bullshit, you know? I don't have time to play games. I, I, I'm a very straightforward person. I've always have been, and maybe that's my problem. Well, how did, the, how did that lead into your writing then? Was there a connection between that, that, well, that I, looking back on the relationship and then writing? Yeah, well, I thought that, you know, everybody knows what first love feels like. I mean, who doesn't know what that feels like? That is something that you'll, you never get again. You know, whether it's bad or good, you never get it again. Mm -hmm. um, and whether it was bad or good for you, everybody remembers the feeling that you get from it or yeah. the memories that you have from it. Um, and then in terms of the the health aspects, I thought, you know, this is this is supposedly such a common thing and nobody's talking about it. None of my friends know what I'm talking about. And that bothered me because I was miserable. I mean, I was, I cannot get out of bed, put myself in the shower, put on a decent outfit for work, miserable. Mm -hmm. And I didn't you want felt very alone too. Yes. Am I mistaken? Like yes. it, did, it wasn't really much known about HPV, I guess, at the no, time publicly. It, it did not really. No, um, I'm having a hard time with this dumpling here. In case you were <laughs> video. What's the difficulty with the dumpling? Oh, because it looks like it's so stuck entangled. Stuck to the other one. It's making me very upset. Um, I'm gonna write a book about it. <laughs> <laughs> but that would be obviously about nothing. Not about nothing. It would be about something very important. This. Yeah, week. dumplings In are important. All dumplings are interconnected, Danielle. <laughs> Um, so, uh, wait, what was the last thing you were saying? Um, what was the last thing I was saying? Oh gosh, I'm blanking too. Um, well, HBB, you were talking about the, the, yes. that being not very public. No, it wasn't being very public. And the thing was that, I mean, there's such a stigma with it, which is bullshit, because three out of four people have it, and I'm shaking like a leaf right now. Why are you shaking? Cold? Mm-mm. It's very strenuous. <laughs> mm -hmm. Um. So... I mean, I just don't get the stigma, I guess, because pretty much everybody has it or will have it. Mm -hmm. And um, I was also, I was asymptomatic. I mean, I didn't think anything was wrong with me, and I just went for a regular checkup at the doctor, like your annual yeah. physical, and they called me a week later, and I thought, this is crazy, you know? This has nothing to do with me. I have nothing to do with this. There's something wrong. Like, this is wrong. Yeah. You know? Um, You're a healthy person, too, on top of that. Totally. Um, I mean, and I was just, I was pissed. I mean, I, I, sh I should have been having sex in college, like, seriously. <laughs> Wait, how, how does that connect? Oh, you should have been, because you got that diagnosed after college, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so, yeah. I'm just being... Were you compelled to write your story then, or did it yes. just dawn on you? Like, uh, it, it sounds a bit, um, to me, you, there was a certain social responsibility that you felt in telling your story and in, in sharing this, that it would help other people who have this. Am I mistaken? Was that no, no, some I of the did. motivation? I, I want to tell people because I didn't want someone to feel the way I did. I mm -hmm. mean, because how I felt was terrible. Um, you, you want know, to help other people, I guess. I want to help other people, and I, I wanted to help myself. You know, it was therapy for me. So, mm -hmm. and how how does it feel like? It, it, how was it in writing the book? It was therapy. Is that mm -hmm. what you mean? How? How? Yeah. Um, I don't I don't know. Like putting it down and having to look at it over and over and over again, and uh -huh. edit it and rewrite it. I, I mean, I got to the point where I was sick of myself, and I was sick of Matt Ryan. <laughs> uh, Matt Ryan being the guy, mm -hmm. the, the the number one. The number one guy. Um, I was sick of, of the whole story, you know, um, to the point that I wanted to be over it and I wanted to be past it. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and unfortunately, what came with that of looking at it too much was the point that I thought maybe everyone else is going to feel that they don't want to read this oh, either. Yeah, yeah. But I, I think that's normal when you write about yourself or you write about something that's personal to yourself. I think you go through a moment of nobody's going to give a shit about this. You know, like nobody cares about your life. Nobody's that interested. You're not, you know, you didn't make a sex tape. Mm -hmm. I mean, not that I, you know, publicly anyway. <laughs> but <laughs> just kidding, mom. <laughs> So, in, um, how did you get beyond that? Did you get beyond the feelings of, wow, I don't know, I, 
people are just talking about my whiny little story or something like that. Because that, that's how I felt. Mm -hmm. Basically, um, I let some people read pieces of it. Mm -hmm. um, it was um, it was kind of them that that made me want to keep going with it. Really? Did they responded to you? Could you see the emotion or the response in their faces? The audience? One or? of my best friends, who my book is dedicated to, mm -hmm. she um, she told me, "You have to get this published." She's like, "I read it in a day. I read it in a day. I couldn't put it down. It made me cry." I have to get it published, so... I essentially did. I read it on the plane, and then I spent, I think, a whole day pretty much in bed mm -hmm. reading your book, wanting to get through as much as I could, and I got through it. And it was... <laughs> I don't finish a lot of books. Um, there was something about your writing. I texted really? you soon after reading yes, it. Yes, you did. Um, I don't remember what I said, but I I, I, I was moved by it, and um, but there's just something about your writing that I found very natural in. Thank you. Now, you have a degree in writing. Mass you communication in English. And, and, it's like a major in it mass med and a minor in English. That's is right. That right? Mm -hmm. um, so, how was your? How has your writing? How did? When did you get? Why did you do an English minor? Or were you interested in writing for a long time? I took so many writing and English classes that I was basically one um, one class short of having the minor. So I just went. Uh -huh. for, you know, I just took one more class to get the minor. Mm -hmm. um, and I was just taking the classes because I love reading and I love writing. Mm -hmm. I always have. And you always have. Always have. Do you, as, like, does that mean there's a, did you write little stories as a kid? I have this stupid little diary, literally starting I think from when I was six. Oh wow! And it's it's like this little uh, has these flowers on it. Uh -huh. It's just with a little lock and a key. Oh uh -huh, yeah. Um, Wait, did you write about this? It sounds vaguely familiar. Maybe I'm making it up. Oh well, you read one of my essays where oh. I talk about what well, I think when I was nine or eight or nine years old, and I had my very first boyfriend. You have like a Tumblr blog with the essays. So we talk yes, about the yeah, okay. That's right. I do have a yeah. Tumblr um, where I talk about my everyday nonsensical life. <laughs> Um, but I cut you off though. So you you, you have this diary mm -hmm. and you wrote in that. I have like tons of them that are, and it's funny because I've never finished one. I always uh, never finish. I never fit like fill up an entire oh. one. I always get about halfway, and then I see a new one that I want to buy, and I buy a new one. So I have so many half finished journals. Yeah. Um, and people give me them as gifts. People have been giving them to me as gifts for years, uh -huh. and I love getting them as gifts. In yeah. fact, actually, it's one of my favorite things to get as gifts. So you just move on to that next. I do. Yeah. Because I get excited, I'm like, oh, it's a pretty cover, and this one's leather bound, or this one's purple and, and green, and it's pretty, and, and I'm gonna write in this one now. So, uh, so, so you, you're, you've been writing almost memoirs in a way, I guess, for a long period. It's not like you were writing. And you said you, you're not so much writing. Uh, your, your writing isn't so much fiction. So much you prefer kind of the more memoir, non-fictional kind of writing. So right. you got your practice, I guess, in, in this diary writing, mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. And journaling. Mm -hmm. um, did you? I had this. I always, when I was younger, I always felt I had a book in me, and I had eventually got a book out. Yeah. Did you have that similar feeling? I did. I always felt I had a book in me. Yeah. But it, I just, I was under the impression uh, for so many years. I think that I thought somebody's going to make you sit down and write a book one day. You know, somebody's going to be like, "You're a great writer. You need to sit down and write a book." And, and you know, that happens to you know people who are our reality show stars like Kim Kardashian, and they'll say, you know, you have a million people following you on Twitter, you need to write a book because you already have a million people who want to buy it. Uh -huh. um, but, you know, I don't have an ass like that, so <laughs> I actually had to sit down and, and do my own writing and, and write my own book. Um, do you remember the moments when, was there a moment when you thought, I'm going to... I'm gonna make this a book. I'm gonna give this a try. You've never written a book before. You've never tried to write a book. Was there that moment where you thought, I'm gonna move in this direction? I started. I started fictionalizing it and and workshopping it in writing classes. Uh, mostly. Because, where where were these writing classes? Uh, well, I took classes with Media Bistro, most notably with a woman named Susan Shapiro, who's okay. a best-selling author, and she's phenomenal. And this was after college. Yes. This was in my early 20s, mm -hmm. and um, I was fictionalizing the story because I felt embarrassed, honestly. You know, I didn't, I didn't know that I wanted to tell my, I wanted to tell my story, but I didn't want to necessarily attach myself to it. So I was, I was, you know, not just changing names. I was making up all these scenarios and writing, oh, you really? know. But at the core of it was the actual story, and so I brought some of this to a class with her, with Susan Shapiro, and she the was fictionalized reading. Thing. Yeah, and and she's like, uh, well, you know, where is this coming from? So I started explaining what the real story was versus the, uh. the fiction. And she's like, you should not fictionalize. You should write this as a memoir. You should you should stick to your story. And I thought, no one's going to want to read that, you know? 
Really? And I thought that at uh -huh. first, you know. And um, and then I also said too, you know, I can tell my story in twelve pages, I not in a book. And she's like, What's that say again? I could tell this story in twelve pages, not not a book. Oh, you know? okay. And she said, uh, sit down, and every time you you sort of go short on detail, uh, don't. You know, don't censor yourself and keep really? going and see how many pages you get. So I sat down and I started, I took this 12 page short story that I had and I started, you know, going back to page one and being like, oh yeah, well, I didn't talk about this or I didn't explain this or, you know, whatever. And so I started doing that page by page and then all of a sudden I had 42 pages. Oh. All of a sudden I had 79 and then all of a sudden I had 100 and something and I thought, this is crazy. I have, like, this is a book. This yeah. is turning into a book. And um, So that advice yeah. from her to not spare the details, is that, is that how you summarize it? Or? Yeah, I think she, what she's really good at is, um, and there was just a piece in the New York Times that she wrote about, uh, you know, when you write a memoir, make me worry that that you're not okay, you know, make me ask if you're okay, that's, that's how you write a successful memoir, and she's totally right, Wow. you know, because so many people after my book were like, are you okay? Oh my gosh, <laughs> that's such a fascinating yeah. piece of advice. It is, it's a, it's a funny thing, I mean, people still, to this day, I mean, and, and a lot <laughs> of that, yeah, okay, yeah, a lot of that took place years ago, but people read it as if it's happening, you know, Yeah. and so I get that, because people are like, oh my god, you know, when was the last time you saw Matt Ryan, I'm like, god, jeez, I have no idea, you know, and who who cares? It's Matt Ryan. Ugh, you know, gross. Yeah. Um, but I get it because when, and that makes me happy though that they read it and they're in it at the moment, you know, and the, and they feel that. Yeah. Know, like I, what I felt it, at that time. I, I guess uh, I'm just coming up. It just feels like I was on a surfboard riding along with you and, and reading your story and, and your experience of it. I'm just thinking about it now. You know, I felt very included in your story too. Yeah. And, and it, maybe it makes me feel as if I know you a little bit, or even a lot. Feel like I know you a lot more than I do as a result of reading the book. Yeah. I mean, I haven't seen you in, I mean, other than one little appearance a few months ago, I haven't seen you in probably over a year, but More than a year. I know as a result, I feel an affinity <laughs> to, have other people had that experience or express I, that? I think so. I feel, I feel like people automatically think they know me. I mean, n not, always, <laughs> not always in a good way. Yeah, but, yeah. I but, can you imagine. Know, um, but it seems like people feel like they know me, you know, and, and feel very comfortable around me, which is nice, you know. I mean, yeah. I've had I've had people come up to me after I've given a talk and just start asking me really personal questions um, about themselves, you know. But, uh -huh. you know, something that I would only ask a close friend, you know. And, I know what you mean. And the, but that makes me feel good because, I, you know, if, if they feel that comfortable talking to me. That's interesting. Did it teach you then? Um, I don't know if this describes you well. Like based on the character in the book, I'll just call it a character even though it's you. It's fine. Um, I, don't, I got that some sense that you, you were very, maybe guarded or, I'm not sure if that's the right word, but you're protective of yourself, I I'm guess. I'm very protective of myself. Okay, you're protective. I still am. You still are. Did, realizing that people open up when you opened up and become vulnerable in, in your presence, did, did that teach you to become a little bit more vulnerable, less guarded, less protective? Yes or no? Or? Trying to make me cry in this interview. Oh, wow. <laughs> Oh, that's no, interesting. This is our over moment. Um, <laughs> no, I mean, I, I am more open than I used to be. I, I definitely am. Um, you know, I just, uh, you know, it's, it's. oh, are you watching me clench my hands? Yeah, <laughs> like, noticing. all nervously. Yeah. Um, well, I mean, it's it's hard. It's, it's actually something you just read of mine that I posted on Tumblr where, mm -hmm. you know, this past year I, you know, developed feelings for somebody and it wasn't it wasn't reciprocated you know on on the same level so you know the old me you know would have just sort of shut down and, and been okay you know you put yourself out there you get hurt that's just how how these things work and I feel that a newer philosophy for me in the last few years is more so it was a good ride you know, I liked being able to feel that way. I don't like the end result, but I liked feeling that way. So I know I can feel that way again and get a better end result next time. And then maybe that sounds sort of clinical and, and business-like, and I don't mean it that way. I mean it in a more in, a, in an emotional sense. Um, but I do. I loved feeling that way again. It was it was fun and it was exciting and, and it, it made me so happy. And um, you know, even though I didn't get what I wanted.
I think I think you can't always get what you want, so that's okay. Did that story? Which story was that? Can you give that me? That was the one about uh, riding a roller coaster, being afraid of riding a roller coaster, uh -huh. you know. And then you know, once you actually force yourself oh, to do it, right. then you realize that you actually enjoyed it. Yeah. Um, you know, once you get past the fear. Yeah, I've been promoting your Tumblr on my Twitter. I, I don't have a lot of followers, <laughs> but I it just want to do it because the, there's something about your language. It's so easy to read now. But, you know, I, do you like talking about how you craft stories? I mean, um, can you tell me a little bit how you? You know, do it's it's uh, it's not really a, a science or anything. It's it's and it's very weird because I can go through a, a good chunk of time where I can't think of anything or like nothing's coming to me, and then sometimes. You know, I was at work yesterday, and um, I was completely not on my game because they kept calling for me to come to set, and I'm like, oh my god, oh my god, wait, 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 because I, I kept having all these memories and ideas because I'm working on book two right now, right? And I'm I'm reconstructing conversations that I had, and you know, for a while I'm like, I don't remember, you know, how how this was said, or he he said something to me, and it and it, and it was so meaningful, and it was so this, and it was so that, but. I couldn't remember exact wording, then all of a sudden things start to come back to Is me. Is that? Oh. And then I, if I don't like write it down right that second, I lose it again, you know, and then I don't know when it's going to come back. That was actually something I was going to ask. I was so impressed by your ability to recall so many details, and not just details of what happened, yeah. but the emotions with such specificity that you yeah. went through moment to moment to moment. That's where the journals came in and helped because I did, with a lot of it, it was still so fresh because I was writing it as it was happening the first book. And this second book isn't that long after things have happened that I can still, you know, recall, but it's not, it's not the same thing when you're, versus writing it when it's happening because I went back like through rough drafts of the first book and there is so much emotion there because I was, you know, in the throes of an emotional right. breakdown. Yeah. So it's you know, it's coming out as you're writing it. And so, you know, it gets cleaned up a little bit, but I made it a point to not edit too much because uh -huh. at first I was editing a lot and I'm like, I don't feel this way anymore, I don't feel this way anymore. And I thought, oh, I'm not staying true to the story uh -huh. because that was how I felt then, you know, and yes, in, in retrospect, I'm much smarter, I'm much more, you know, level-headed about since, everything. Since that older version of yourself, mm -hmm. yeah. But, uh, you know, so, I mean, I can read parts of this book and cringe looking at the older version of myself. <laughs> I, they, you know, I, I sometimes do readings and I'm reading something and I'm like, oh, God, that I thought that or, you know. <laughs> but, it, you know, I was young. I was, you know, I was right out of college. I was in love for the first time. We're, we're allowed to be stupid. Yeah. We're allowed to, you know, make these mistakes. We're allowed to be ridiculous. Ridiculous and I'm know. guessing that's one of the ways that people connect with you because we many of us have felt that. I mean we still do I mean it's okay to still be ridiculous. I just you know <laughs> I just now I, I wouldn't stare at a at a text message that a guy sent me for ten hours and be like, Well what is the me placed there? <laughs> An aunt, you know, so wait, he's in love with me. <laughs> Wow, you're um, talking about uh, um, Seinfeld being a story about nothing, and here your <laughs> life was a story about complete significance of everything, <laughs> down to the letter V. <laughs> There's a pixel missing on my text message. Oh my god, what does that <laughs> mean? <laughs> what does that mean? He didn't mean it, but what does that mean what in does general? That mean? You know, and uh, so the journals help with your uh, yeah. remember, recall. Oh, you're, oh, you're about to say something else. Yeah. Um, yeah, it doesn't matter. Uh, <laughs> so you're. Um, I noticed a, you did, uh, I hope this is appropriate to talk about, you had a um, period, a, I don't know what, what, what year it was, maybe 2010, where you were dating a guy a month? Yeah, and, 2009. Right, so, that, so that was the basic, 2009, so that was the basic exercise. Was that, was that, were you trying to write a book in doing that too? Or I what was, was I was thinking about writing a book and, and be, you know, because they have these things called stunt memoirs where you, you do something, you pull a stunt, uh -huh. so to speak, and then you write about it. Oh, and I didn't so, know that before. Yeah, so it's it's a turn. And then, um, but as I was doing the experiment, um, you know, certain things came to light and it just, it didn't feel natural to write a book. It, it felt very forced to be making it into a book. Uh -huh. and, some of the, but some of the stories from the dates that I had over the course of the year are hilarious and or stupid. And, and you've been writing about those funny. on your Tumblr, is that? Yes, yeah. I wrote a co about a couple of them, and then I realized that what I just needed to do was weave them into my second book and, and make it sort of, mm. you know, just just part of the story. Because the reason that it it all, you know, launched was because of a guy that 
the second book launch or the first you the, made the first the, book? Well, the idea of the experiment, oh, I should I say. Oh, the, I the data guy, uh, one guy a month for a whole year. Yeah. Um, it was just sort of, I was just trying to get over somebody because uh, I had been sort of blindsided by a guy I'd been friends with for a year mm -hmm. and um, something had happened and his supposed ex-girlfriend was actually current. So, you know, I was just sort of kind of taken out of my element because it was one of those things where I'm like, if, you know, we were friends all this time, you know, all you do is talk about an ex-girlfriend and now all of a sudden, you know, so um, I was, I, you know, I lost a friend versus, you know, somebody oh, that yeah. I could potentially date, which was what it seemed to be turning into. It was, well, we're not friends anymore because you're a liar. Mm -hmm. And um, so that that was sort of you know wasn't wasn't a great experience, um, and I was talking about it to a friend of mine mm -hmm. who then was suggesting go online you know go on Match.com go on eHarmony and, and you know just just start dating. yeah just start dating and I thought about it and it just and I don't knock online dating I think it works for a lot of people uh, it just it doesn't feel like it fits for me mm -hmm. I don't know why it just something about it and I have no you know no problem with it I just it just doesn't feel right I, and so I you go, stayed away from it yes and yeah. I go right with gut instinct so then I thought what if I sort of do my own version of going out and dating by making it a point that I find a new guy every month for a year to go out with you know who cares maybe it's somebody online at Starbucks maybe it's my friend's brother you know who knows how I'm gonna meet them but I'm gonna actually do it um, and I and I got to October before I met a really good one. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but you know, I think I think regardless of because I got knocked for the experiment in September by the guy that was my September. You mean knocked? You mean called out on? Or, yeah. yeah. I mean, he t he told me that the whole he told me that it was kind of ridiculous and that I was being counterproductive and I think that you, I think you wrote a post I did. About I wrote that, about yeah. this. Yeah. And and so he kind of made me think more. But you know, I I agree with him a little bit that I was maybe too focused on finding next one instead of paying attention to the current one, which I get makes sense, because I was. It was like you a, got that criticism early on, too. Yes. Like, yeah, I remember like, it, your friend said, mm -hmm. like, what if you find somebody, right? Right. And it, and it was, you know, because I think I was more excited about the challenge of, who am I going to find next? You know, how am yeah. I going to find somebody next? Rather than enjoying the present situation, which, you know, so, in that aspect, that was wrong of me to do that. But I also disagree with him in that I think that making up my mind to do the experiment I was forcing myself to put myself out there in a more, yeah. you know, public way than I was used to because of my whole guarded sensibilities. <laughs> um, you know, I, I made it a point that if some some guy talked to me, you know, and I found him funny or attractive or charming or whatever, instead of just sort of smiling and, you know, letting it, you know, pass on or whatever, mm -hmm. I was cool, okay, you know, let's go out. Mm -hmm. And that was not the norm for me, you know, but I mean, I've, I've become more and more like that. Uh, more and more like... Uh, ballsy. Ballsy? <laughs> what, does that mean asking other people out or saying well, yes to situations you would have said no to in the past? Do you want me to give you an example? Yeah, yeah, give an example. Okay. Me. Two weeks ago, I was oh, at a bar okay. with my friends and uh, football was on over our heads and so we were laughing because at first we thought a lot of the guys in the bar were looking at us but they were actually watching the football game uh -huh. and then there was this guy who I thought was really attractive across the bar and I'm like I think he's looking at me but he might be watching football I really I just, <laughs> you I just, or football I just don't know yeah. you know so you know I'd had a couple glasses of wine and so I said to my friend Heather I'm gonna go over there and talk to him and she said what are you, you know what are you gonna say and I have no idea but I'm gonna figure it out on the way over there oh wow so I just walked over to him and I said I have a question are you watching football or are you looking at me and he laughed, and his, he was with his brother, and his brother laughed too. And he said, I didn't even know there was a football game on. <laughs> so, it pays to have balls. So, um, being that, so, did that teach you something after that trial? Well, I mean, I guess I'm, I'm you know, I'm 
I'm not afraid to make an ass of myself. <laughs> what happened as a result? Uh, we've been hanging out. Oh, oh, I'm, oh, I'm, I'm sorry. I wasn't even anticipating <laughs> that kind of response. I was thinking, like, did you die? Did I die? <laughs> no. No. No, I sat down and I had a couple more glasses of wine with him. Mm -hmm. Now, did that, did that experience well, get you to start writing? Yes. It does? What? Do you, more specifically, I think the moment that you sit down to write something, I know it's not always probably the same motivation every time you do it, but what's the moment before that compels you to write, or is it, or do you feel obligated to write when you write? Usually, uh, like I said, when I remember something and then it gets me excited to write, or um, a really strong emotion. So if I'm really angry, if I'm really hurt, if I'm really happy, any one of those things, I, I need to express it and I'm so much better at expressing myself by writing. Mm -hmm. I mean, I'm, I've, I've made it sort of my mission to get better at expressing myself verbally. I mean, but for, oh yeah, like right now, it, yeah. this is tough for you I guess, but if you had a chance to write it down, it would come off what, more eloquently or? Maybe or? more eloquently and, and I could go back and, and spell check and I can't spell check this. <laughs> There are a lot of spelling errors in what you're I saying know. right now. I mean, I've I been can't a imagine when I'm like eating on camera. Do you realize that Tumblr is spelled with an E? No, I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. Um, so that, that's interesting because I, I, I am motivated by certain emotion, powerful emotions. Anger sometimes motivates yeah. me to write things. Love of someone can motivate me to write poetry specifically yes. as I gravitate to. What? Um, I think hurt is the one that, that usually starts it and then that sort of parlays into some of the other emotions, uh -huh. you know, because I've never been good at expressing when I'm hurt. Now do you, so is the hurt though, so is it, are you saying that a lot of your writing is also relationship, a function of relation, the hurt is a function of relationship? I'm sorry, that's not very eloquent. Um, <laughs> Spell check. <laughs> grammar re-rise. Um, uh, do you find that most of what you write about is relationship related or if you get hurt by, uh, I don't know, a, a bumblebee, would you write about that? No, I guess not. Uh -huh. uh, unless I could think of some fabulous metaphor to use. But, um, <laughs> no, yeah, it is a lot about relationships, but not just dating relationships. I mean, uh, friend, friendship relationships. And, you know, uh, I write a lot about uh, my family, uh, much to the chagrin of my mother, but uh, Fran, my mom, and I, we have... Fran is your mom. Fran is my mom. You, you write about Fran a lot in your Twitter feed. I do. I thought Fran was a good friend. I guess Fran is a good friend who actually happened to birth you. Yes. <laughs> yeah, a good friend who happened to birth me. That's good. You're going to tell her. There's, people should birth more of their friends. Like. <laughs> yes, they should. Um, and the best part about Fran is that she never realizes when she's being funny. In fact, she's probably usually mad at me when I think she's being funniest. Uh -huh. um, but... You know, she, she has these pearls of wisdom and these franisms that are just so, you know, that I always think of. And then sometimes I find myself doing or saying things where I think, oh my God, I'm turning into Fran. <laughs> <laughs> in, your, in your book, you write about uh, the moment when you asked about what immaculate conception meant. <laughs> I actually had one of those moments as a kid where I thought, it, I thought it meant big idea. I thought immaculate meant big and conception was a concept. So I thought it meant big <laughs> idea. So you had those moments too. Where on earth did you get this? Or you, had the, you allude to that in the book. You asked your dad about what immaculate conception meant and it was really uncomfortable yeah. for him. Yeah. You have a lot of discomfort, at least portrayed in losing it. Mm -hmm. How did you overcome? Where did you get the courage to talk to with? Yeah, and then they, they <laughs> looked over your manuscript several times. I imagine they must have felt embarrassed. Um, well, my dad is has not read the book. Oh, I thought. Oh, I thought he yeah. had. Okay. No, he has not read the book. He we, we we have an agreement that he does not read the book. I mean, he really. Is this a written agreement? It's, 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 it's like got a gold seal. It was notarized. Um, it's something you know when. And what I said to him was, you know, it, it's it's very personal, it's very female, you know, and it, and it's it's just something that you would be uncomfortable reading, you know. And even um, I told my mom that she could read it because I thought she'd be a little bit better, but even she gets uncomfortable with some of it. So wow. this this is Fran reading the book. Oh 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 no 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 okay. Mm -hmm. Oh, no, 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 oh. Like, she just, you know, she gets to parts where I get a little graphic, and then yeah. she's like, no, I can't, yeah. you know? And, I mean, do you really need to read about your kid losing her virginity? Not so much, Yeah, you know? I know, but I guess I mean, when you're writing it, though, did you know that she would skip some of the stuff, or did you think, you know what, my mom might read this, and um, um, I'm just going to go with it? I took a... Wait, hold on, this? Really loud stuff. Wait, <laughs> 
great shot. Um, <laughs> She, does she, uh, you, I mean, you still, there's still a chance that she could have read this stuff and yeah. know the details. I, have you always, it doesn't sound like you've always been so, um, uh, sharing your intimate details with your family, but it's out there now and they can I mean, read it. Yeah. They, you just thought they're not I mean, going to read some of the stuff? My or? aunt has read it, my aunt uh-huh. and, uh, and some of her relatives have read it, my cousin has read it. Um, and you know, you, you have to not think about it. I, you know, I gotta take Susan Shapiro's advice, and I gotta write it as if they're not reading it. That's another thing that they tell you about memoir. You have to write it and not think of your parents. You know, because then you will censor yourself. Interesting. And because you can't worry about what two people are, are going to be embarrassed by. Because it's really, it's my embarrassment. You know, in the right. book. it really is. It's not okay. theirs. It's mine. It's it's my. That's experiences. interesting. That's interesting. That, I mean, that's how I look at it. I don't think I, I wrote anything that could really embarrass them. Yeah. But, um, you know, maybe Matt Ryan. Matt Ryan should be embarrassed. <laughs> but, um, you know, I. I I just think I have to write it for the 99.9% of other people who are reading it who don't know me and, you know, weren't there during that period and, and didn't raise me and, or birth me, as you said. <laughs> so, you know, they're, they're not going to look at it through the same eyes that they would. They're going to look at it as a girl that they don't know who went through this situation, um, all these situations, you know, and, and hopefully relate to it. You know, I, we, I touched a little bit on like the, the way you structure your works. I, I can't remember what you said specifically offhand, but there's something I, I, I've noticed in some of your writing, like maybe in specifically the way you write in your Tumblr, mm-hmm. um, is that... Like I'm talking oh, you almost, to you? What? You said like I'm talking to you? Well, there's that, but I, like the structure of it, one thing I noticed, oftentimes I, I, the last sentence somehow connects something that was very early in the, in the mm-hmm. and that's a craft a lot of people artists can use uh, I, I do improvisation and that's recommended there mm-hmm. even just writing it's nice to do that um, are you conscious of that uh, do these things just come organically from you or is this training what? sometimes I do it you know purposefully you know I, I think something will happen and I think oh god this reminds me of this you know and that's sort of how I connect it and, and write a story that way but other times it happens accidentally and I realize yeah. how weird that this you know connects to this you know I never really get a sense that it's um, just craft at all. It's that it's that's your art. Your talent lies in some of this, this natural ability to weave a story together. Which I just I guess I should say what you do when you do that it often makes it very entertaining for me and okay. appreciative of the the work that you do. I don't know why, but it's satisfying. It's satisfying. Um, uh, so I see that. I'm trying to think what other things I see too. Uh, I just I'm so astounded by how crisply you're able to capture emotion. But you said the journals help. Yeah. You know I, I I'm having trouble believing that you did as little editing on the book um, as you say you did because it, when it comes to journal. You know you translated your you pretty much took your journals and made them the book. Mm-hmm. Um, what I trust that you actually did though. It's just yeah. hard for me to believe that. What kinds of edits did you? You touched on it a little bit, but do you change the order around to make the chapters, or how did you, you know, how did you go about creating I, the book? Um, with creating the book, well, you know what I did, what I did edit out was because there was a there was a lot of sort of superfluous, you know, unnecessary anger in there because okay. of how I felt when it was going on, and, and you know, once it sat for a while and collected dust a little bit, and then I went back and looked at it fresh. Mm-hmm. I thought, you know what, I'm not writing this book uh, to to say I'm angry at the world. I'm, I'm angry at what happened to me. I'm angry at this guy who, you know, in, in the grand scheme of things, means nothing, you uh-huh. know. Um, and and a lot of, I felt a lot of my chapters were coming across that way as I was just sounding angry, you know, and I didn't want that because I was, I mean, yes, I wanted to show that I was angry at some point, but I didn't want it to be all about that. I wanted it to be about, you know, getting, getting past it, getting over it, moving on, you know, that, you know, what they always say, when one door closes, another door opens, but you stare so long at the door that's shut, they don't pay attention to the door that has opened, you know, and I think I did that for a long time. I think that there were a lot of probably missed opportunities at that time because I was just, I was so focused on what went wrong here versus looking forward to where I can go here. So it's almost kind of like you had a greater story all the anger that was in there so it was important to tell some of the anger but it's not the point so right. you can cut away cut away some of it right. I mean I, I, it was just it was just surprising yeah. uh, that how much of it <clears throat> showed up in your journal 
and I was just like, how did that, how did you write so perfectly? <laughs> I know there's editing, there, you know, there was some editing, but yeah. how did you write so, you, that's that where I think, that's, that's where I'm coming from when I say the talent seems so natural. I know you've got a degree in this stuff, <laughs> but, but still, it just seems like you've had that before. Um, there's one last thing I wanted to ask you about. What's, when you, so you do readings of your work too, right? Or maybe you've done one, I don't know how many you've I've done. done a few. Done yeah. a few. Mm -hmm. How is that? What is that like? Do, do you consider yourself, is that part of the art of in writing a it's, book or is it something different? It's, well, here's the thing. I have, I've acted. I, you know, I did shows in high school and, you know, I've done a couple commercials, had a line here and there, wherever, but I don't really consider myself an actress and I don't really want to be an actress. Mm -hmm. So it's a little bit hard because a lot of times I'll choose a passage to read out of the book that almost begs to be acted out yeah. and I think oh god I'm so uncomfortable you know <laughs> what like the when you get the the, the cryo yes. what, yeah, oh you want to act god, that I out totally act that out <laughs> that's, so you have the stirrups in your legs no and I stuff. don't really go that far but. oh okay that's what I'm thinking about. But, you want to act that out I mean um just because there's so much internal monologue mm -hmm. you know and so it's when you do a reading out loud, it, it's it's sort of. I mean, I, I usually try to read parts that are going to make people laugh. Yeah. You know, uh, because that makes you want to. If you haven't read the book, it makes you want to read the book. And if you have read the book, it reminds you why you liked the book in the first place, and that you're here to see me. Mm -hmm. um, How do you read? I mean, do you just read it dryly and let it, them laugh, or do you? Is it become a little bit of a performance? I haven't it's seen. It's become you read a little one. bit of a performance. <laughs> really? <laughs> yeah. Wigs and all, or no, no, no wigs. <laughs> Well, Danielle, thanks. I guess I should carry maybe stirrups and a paper gown around with me, though, maybe. I don't know. I think that's a perfect way to end this. Thanks a lot for the interview. You're welcome. <laughs>